Your children are not your children. They are the sons and daughters of life's longing for itself. They come through you, but not from you. And though they are with you yet, they belong not to you. You may give them your love, but not your thoughts, for they have their own thoughts. You may house their bodies, but not their souls, for their souls dwell in the house of tomorrow, which you cannot visit, not even in your dreams. You may strive to be like them, but seek not to make them like you, for life goes not backward, nor tarries with yesterday. Dear child, I am writing you this letter with all of my love. In this moment, as I write this letter, you do not physically exist. You haven't been born. But I want you to know that even though I have not looked into your eyes yet, that I have not hugged you yet, held you, played with you, talked with you, or watched you grow, I have thought of you and considered you. When I was a little younger, I asked myself one of the most important questions any human being can ask. I asked, what is a parent? What does it mean to raise a human being into this world? This is a very serious question. It should not be taken lightly. And it could very well be that the answer to this question may be a healing onto this world. A world that no doubt you have seen is filled with pain, strife, confusion and very large egos. I do not know what the future holds, and I do not pretend to know what our relationship together will be like, but I will say this. If there is anything you find good in me or love about me, I want you to know that it's in part because of you. You, who only right now exist in the thought of my mind. I understand this may seem a little strange or confusing, so let me explain it to you in detail. Let me explain to you how I answered one of the most important questions I ever asked myself. To know what a parent is, I realized I have to know what a child is, because the knowledge of one will help to understand the other. They are related. <laughs> Babies and toddlers, <laughs> they're so fascinating. For their little minds to be healthy, they require so much attention affection, patience, and love. They need to smile and laugh every day, whether that be from hand puppets or peekaboo. And their curiosity needs to be encouraged. They need to touch objects, be shown colors and depth. Also, they need to crawl and walk on the grass and play in the dirt to get familiar with the source of their existence. All of these things help, but of course it doesn't end there. A child's mind, as you know, as many people know, is very impressionable. They mimic the people in their environment, especially those that they have a deep connection with. It is very easy for them to adopt the behavior and personalities of their parents. Children, they worship their parents. I remember when I was a child, I used to look upon my mother and father as if they were Greek gods. It is only when we become older, we realize that they are only human too. If we examine this together carefully, we will see that the child is made up of its environment. The parents, the home, the food, the behavior, the schools, the activities, the friends, the local community, the culture, and all of the other countless variables and behaviors that will impact the mind. Now, I know that I will not be able to shelter you from certain pains that you will experience, nor will I try to, this is very natural. But what I will do is patiently and creatively help you to understand what it is that you are feeling it is important that I teach you how to think for yourself, teach you how to be a light unto yourself, teach you how to look at events in their totality, moment by moment. This is called self-awareness. And with enough patience and creativity on the part of the parent, it can be taught to their child. Now, like every relationship, there will be hard times, but I promise my strictness and discipline to you will always be met with reason and explanation so you are not left with fear or confusion, but left with understanding. 
and I promise this reason and explanation will always come from a perspective of unfragmented love. This is love that not only exists for you, but also for this world. Your consciousness far exists beyond your own skin. It is like ripples in a pond, constantly moving over each other, crossing over into others and others into you. As much as other minds disagree with this understanding, it still holds true and can very easily be experimented with. You and the world are very much related. You can understand others by understanding yourself, and you can understand yourself by understanding others. I have observed parents that become infatuated with their children, dangerously to the point where almost all of their happiness is lived through their child and not through themselves. And this kind of infatuation can even continue well into the child's adult years. This kind of behavior from a parent can cause the child to have anxiety and self-entitled personality. I do not want this for you or for myself. Now I realize that it's very important that you learn to love yourself. And what better way to do this than to be an example? It is important for all human beings to find something that they are extremely passionate about. Something that, that gives them life and vitality. Something that will generate self-happiness and worth inside the family and in the community. Being the social creatures that we are, this passion comes full circle when we share it with others. Sharing lets us know that we are appreciated and alive. What we think, what we say, what we do, it all matters infinitely because it creates the environment. And you and I and everyone else, we are not separate from this environment. So we have to ask ourselves, what kind of things do we want to put into our minds? Because ultimately, this is what we will project out of ourselves. What actions will we take? Also consider and realize that even inaction in itself is a form of action. How do we want to bring our passions to life? How do we want to share these passions with others? These are your questions, not mine. This is your journey and I do not want to control it. I have no grand vision of what you will become, no expectations. Because if I did, it would imply that I look onto you with control and self-gratification, which is ridiculous, because you are your own soul, your own mind, and all of your achievements are yours. It is impossible for you to ever disappoint me. The only disappointment you should ever feel is self-disappointment. No matter what happens in life, you will always have your own heart and mind that you will need to reconcile with. All of life and all of relationship must become personal to you so you do not blame or push your pains onto others. How is it that I know these things and I am not yet a father? Well, the child is not necessarily what defines someone as a parent. Being a parent is a mindset that can exist before the child is even here. If one is careful and understands this mindset, they will be left with a feeling of tremendous responsibility. Remember, the apple does not fall far from the tree, and that apple will only be as healthy and as strong as the tree it falls from. So, what is a parent? It is a chance. A beautiful chance. A chance is all we human beings have ever had. Just like the tree, it is my responsibility to create the world you will be born into. The home and also myself. All I have ever given you is a chance. If you are to understand the virtues of love, patience, compassion, and kindness, it must first exist inside me. If there is ever a chance that you will adopt my behavior, I have a responsibility to the world, to you, and to myself to become more intelligent, loving, and kind. I must create intelligence in myself. I must create self-awareness in myself. I must create love, patience, understanding, and compassion in myself. I then must take this into the home that I will live in before you arrive. I must have the courage to understand my fears and iniquities, 
so that I can be self-aware and dissolve them. This way, you will never have the chance to inherit ugliness. As I sit here writing this letter to you, I realize you may never, you may never actually exist. You may never be born. If this is true, it's okay. This is okay. This does not make the words that I have written any less important. The mindset of a parent is healthy, child or not. This mindset takes into consideration another and drives a person to want to become the best human being possible. Being a parent is simply a chance, a chance to be fully human and an opportunity to help another to be fully human as well.